And today, very specifically, is called the Sunday of the Forefathers of Christ. This morning, and next Sunday as well, the humanity of the Lord Jesus is emphasized. That the Lord Jesus is indeed a son of Israel, and that in him, the fullness of God dwelt bodily, physically, as St. Paul writes in the Bible. The word of God, through whom the universe was created, galaxy after galaxy, 100,000 million stars in each one, if not more, became a real flesh and blood human being, complete with human ancestry, through the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, and very specifically through her, a Jewish ancestry. Today in our hymns, we sang of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the prophet Moses and Aaron, his brother who was the first high priest of ancient Israel. We sang of David, the king, as well as Old Testament prophets like Elijah, Daniel, Isaiah, and all the many other prophets that are actually depicted in the stained glass windows in the dome of our church. But we also sang about the righteous women of the Old Testament, of Sarah and Rebecca, Ruth and Hannah, Judith, Deborah, and Esther. We sang of all those men and women of the Old Testament who found their life in serving the living God. And their reason for living was to praise God, not just in words, but in deeds. Not just by what they said, but also by what they did. Their prayer was the prayer of the book of Psalms. Seek God and your soul shall live. They prepared the way for the coming of Jesus. Now today and next Sunday, there's a certain sense in which we celebrate the Jewishness of the Lord Jesus, his roots in the people of Israel. And this is why, for us as Orthodox Christians, every form of anti-Semitism, all hatred of the Jewish people, is and must be completely foreign to us, especially during a time of rising anti-Semitism in this country and around the world. The Lord Jesus is a Jew. His mother, the Virgin Mary, is a Jew. The apostles are Jews. And St. Paul, the apostle, whose name our church bears, described himself as being of the nation of Israel, a Hebrew born of Hebrews of the tribe of Benjamin in his letter to the Philippians. Instead, in Orthodox Christianity, we follow the example of St. Maria of Paris, a Russian Orthodox nun who was arrested and murdered in a Nazi concentration camp for hiding and protecting Jews in Nazi-occupied Paris during World War II. Orthodox Christians follow the example of Chrysostomos, the Greek Orthodox bishop of the island of Zakynthos during World War II, who when ordered by the Nazis to turn over the names of the 275-person Jewish community on the island to get them ready for deportation to the death camps, handed in a piece of paper with his own name written on it and had the entire Jewish community hidden in the homes of rural visitors. The entire Jewish community of the island of Zakynthos survived the war as a result of his courage. We also follow the example of Archbishop Damaskinos of Athens, who in 1943, once the Nazis began rounding up or attempting to round up the Jewish population of Athens, began issuing false baptismal certificates and had Jewish families hidden in the homes of Greek Orthodox families in Athens and also in the port city of Piraeus to protect them from that deportation to the death camps. Now, when confronted by the SS, and threatened with a firing squad, he informed the German officer in charge, according to the traditions of the Greek Orthodox Church, he said, our bishops are hung and not shot. Please respect our traditions. Those of you who went with me to Greece on pilgrimage, you know that his statue is standing outside in the plaza of the Cathedral of Athens, and with those very words carved in stone beneath his statue. Now, after the war, he continued to serve until his death in 1949. All three of these Orthodox Christians, one a canonized saint of the church, have been declared by Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Martyrs and Heroes Remembrance Authority in Israel, to be 
among the righteous among the nations, an honor that's given to non-Jews who at great personal risk saved the lives of Jews during the Holocaust. So as we prepare to celebrate Christmas, we remember the humanity of the Word of God, a humanity that is rooted in the people of Israel who had been chosen by God for the salvation of the entire human race.